Um, I'm Stephanie Ball. I'm the program director here at Cosmos Group of Companies. Uh, my role involves contracting with different government agencies and community and businesses to provide services um, to folks in our community with brain injury, um, people that live with mental health diagnosis, people with developmental disabilities, um, addictions, coming out of homeless situations, just anyone in the community um, that comes from marginalized populations. I'm really excited about the changes uh, in human services, particularly with the social policy framework and all of the transformational changes that are happening with PDD over the next couple of years. I was really fortunate in my career back in the UK to be a part of the changes that happened across the nation with human services back in 2000 with the Community Care Act coming out and, and other um, best practices around valuing people with disabilities. So there seems to be um, a lot happening at once and I think the government still have work to do in ironing out the kinks and looking at processes and and how to make sure that we don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. But I think that it's an exciting time to be in human services. I think the move towards results-based budgeting and outcomes-based monitoring can only improve quality of life for the people that we support. And we're always working to find our new 100%. And I think now is the time to um, hold that standard provincially for all human services. So in terms of inclusiveness, I think um, the world's getting better. I think there's a, a generation that are coming out now as, as emerging leaders for our future society that have a stronger sense of social justice. And I, I think the um, global culture that we live in is certainly driving that. I think our community in Red Deer, um, there are certainly people that in everyday life demonstrate equality and citizenship. Um, but I think we have, we have a ways to go. I think there's still uh, a belief in a lot of pockets that people with disabilities are second-class citizens and don't have the ability to contribute the same as anyone else and I think um, it's a myth you know and I think with every passing day with agencies like ourselves with our community partners and businesses that um, open their doors to employing people with disabilities I think we move the needle on that myth every every day but there's still a lot of work to do in what our community. What are the um, results of that inclusion in, in workplaces? What did you generally hear in terms of Productivity and the usual stuff. We hear a lot of positive things around productivity. There's a huge business case um, from employing a diverse workforce. And, you know, we don't believe that businesses, um, anybody c gets a safe bet with anyone they hire. You know, you interview somebody, they're not going to tell you they take every other Monday off. They're not going to tell you that they're going to phone in sick at the drop of a hat. You know, we work with employers who are willing to support a di work, diverse workforce and it's it pays off it it educates community in a different way you know who are some of the major employers um, if you don't mind. yeah absolutely we we have a lot of uh, recurring employers um, Safeway has uh, employed some of our clients Tony Romas have employed our clients Duckerings, um, Symphony, Living, we have somebody who's a self-employed musician who goes down there and is paid entertainment. We have um, a lot of retail and food service industry employers around the community. And with every day it grows, you know, we've put out um, an interest with the city of Red Deer. We've been trying to work with them for quite some time to lead as a community in employing, um, in being an inclusive employer. How's that going? Well, we recently had a conversation with Tara Veer, who has said that they are looking at opportunities to employ people with disabilities in the very near future. So I know it's election time, so we'll see where that goes.